Oh, cool. Yeah, that always happens. So we are live. <laughs> I just had some spicy green beans. Lovely. Oh. <laughs> Hi, everyone, anyone, the world who is watching us on LinkedIn and maybe later on YouTube because that's where this will live in perpetuity. <laughs> I know, earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <sighs> what a day. Um, it's officially 1201 where I am. Thank goodness, because this is happening. So. Uh, it's 701 at nighttime Good. here. So I, I finished. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm just starting. And you know what? It's not that I'm just tired. I'm just, I think I'm mentally spent. Anyway, I'm going to have a glass of wine and then we're going to talk. Wine helps. Sometimes. Oh, wine does help. Sometimes. So why not are we always. here? We are here for, and usually I call this something different. I think today is just called Leah. Oops. <laughs> People are going to be like, I'm watching Leah. This is great. But technically, this is my wonder, comma, women and wine, cheers again, series, where I get to learn about a lovely, lovely woman who's doing some cool stuff. And we get to be like, oh my God, you're amazing and we get to drink a glass of wine. And for me, this is especially special because it's been a, such a long day and it's only noon, but it's noon, so this is legal. Ha! Noon's good. On a Saturday, noon is usually my, okay, I can I can go and have a little glass of wine. It's not Saturday. Yeah, I know, okay, but I have an excuse. <laughs> it's a special meeting with Magda. Yay. <laughs> and the world, hi. <laughs> hello world. So world, hello again, I'm Magda. And I am also a woman, hence the wonder women and wine. And I have many, many things that I'm wondering about today. But joining me is a wonder woman, wonder lady, wonder chick, Leah Black, who is joining us from, what's the place called in Spain? It's called Astorias. Astorias, Astorias. is in northern Spain, in the mountains. I actually Googled it yesterday for the first time. Really, do you like it? Yes, it looks amazing. I We were chatting yesterday, you know, how I was like, hey, I'm coming for the weekend. I'm not coming this weekend, but I literally did look up and like, okay, if I fly to Madrid, how do I get there? <laughs> Easy, it's really simple. <laughs> for, for the wine and the cheese. Um, so Leah, you are affiliated with Cocharia in that you yeah. are now, well, first of all, you found us and then you join our webinars. You are training as a coach, and from what I hear, you're like a master coach. So, good job. Yeah, just found that out myself. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> no, you didn't. You already knew it. Just now you have it in writing. Um, and you're also doing some cool stuff in general in life, but also with Coach Aria. So, um, you work in the space of youth mentoring and coaching. So I think it'll be, I've got lots of questions to ask you and lots of things I want to wonder about, but let's, yeah, can you give an introduction? Tell us who you are, wow. what you do. That is such an open question, who I am and what I do. Okay, I'll start with what I do, that's easier. Um, <laughs> what I do is I am a youth mentor and youth coach. I, I call myself a global youth mentor and coach because I'm online and I have a lot of clients all across Europe, um, in Africa, and now I'm everywhere, America, India, everywhere, it's very exciting. Um, I'd also say that I'm still a youth worker. I have projects on helping young people to find their voice and use their voice to make changes in the world, positive changes. I think, with young people today, with all that's going on with Greta Thunberg and the Fridays for Future and all these, I mean, that's just one example. There are many more young people who are just as spectacular, if not even more. And I feel this is the time to help young people to speak out and to say what needs to happen in the future for them, not for us, for them. Um, so I do have some Youth Voices projects. Um, that's currently in Africa, it's all across Africa, um, where they're sharing their voices on public value, well-being, um, what's needed for their future. And it's, it's to bridge the gap between generations as well, because 
older generations don't always listen to young people. And now is the time, especially with the internet and all the hashtag movements that we have online, etc. cetera. Um, what else do I do? I volunteer for an amazing charity in Zambia and I am the youth development coordinator there. So I do all kinds of things, child protection, safeguarding, write some policies, um, help run youth projects. Um, I have been in Zambia for a while as well and set up an orphan peer mentoring program. So I still kind of work on that on the, the sidelines. I could talk forever, Magda. There's a lot of projects, you know. Are you sure you, you want me to keep projects. babbling on? Yep. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try and shorten them down. You're the person who's, uh, you know, the focus here, but like... <laughs> Talk about the specifics because yesterday you and I were chatting about something else and you mentioned that you've even done like sexual health, um, yep. which is such a scary thing for anyone to do. And you're going into tribes in Africa to talk about that. It's pretty fascinating. It, it, I don't see it like that, I guess, but <laughs> maybe. Um, so yeah, that kind of takes me back, I guess. I've been doing this for about 15 years. So my passion is informal education mentoring, coaching, anything to do with life skills, absolutely anything. So any approach that you can take, which actually always, almost all of the time actually takes a coaching approach, which is why I call myself a coach. And that's what I do. Mm -hmm. um, but in formal education, I've taught personal social health, health education in the UK, Zambia, Kenya. I think that's it. Yes, maybe. Um, and part of that personal social health education was sex ed. So, and it's just, these are things that are so normal to all of us. They're as normal as learning maths and English and sciences. I mean, surely that's the route that everyone's going to go down one day as well. You need to learn these things. So it's always been a passion of mine to get the facts out there, to let young people know what options they have, what, you know, potential risks there are. Obviously, I've worked a lot in child protection and safeguarding as well for many years. So that's something, again, I'm really passionate about. And I feel prevention is better than cure. End. And if you can make a list of all the things that you need to prevent to help, that's what I do. I help to tackle oppression, um, inequality, gender, sexual and gender-based violence is something I'm really kind of passionate about and I, I did start a PhD in that last year but I've stopped I've quit that's another story <laughs> boring honestly it wasn't me but anyway um <laughs> when them all it's okay yeah yeah and no, I'm more proactive I think I do like the research side but you know I am really proactive and want to be out there so sexual health I mean think of all the things that go wrong because people don't know about sexual health we don't talk about it in some places some tribes some countries you shouldn't be talking about it why not you know, what is it that we're all worried about? So I was, you know, speaking about this recently um, in my coach training about the systemic approach and how coaching and education, it's not just about the young people, it's teachers, it's the community, it's parents, it's families, it's everyone to understand. And that's what I'm trying to do. That's my aim. I wouldn't say I've fully done that in the past. I've tried, but I'd love to, to get it right, to create a model to to get the community involved, to be able to to help young people and the whole system in you're general. making strides. Um, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about the project you're doing with Kocharia? Because talk about being proactive. Mm, proactive, right, okay. So that's that's one of my main ones, it's exciting. Um, so with Kocharia, I'm helping to set up a youth. We haven't fully named it yet. And the reason we haven't fully named it is we're actually involving young people in this. So we're at the stage where we're design thinking and we're getting the voice of young people involved in the design. So we've got an idea of what we want to cover. It's those life coaching leadership skills that I personally believe are not taught enough, if at all in some schools and some places. Um, and if everybody in the world knew these skills about leadership, life, coaching, mentoring etc imagine what the world would be like you know that yeah. for me is why we're doing this and I'm so lucky that I found coach Arya because it's not something you can do on your own you need to do this together to be able to make that impact and so we're creating a free on demand um online youth life leadership course specifically aimed at 15 to 25 year olds because you're at that age of that transition into adulthood however it could really 
be any age in youth. We're making sure the content is appropriate to whomever it can help, really. Um, so yeah, teenage years, it's mostly focused at young adults. And we've got all kinds, things like, who are you? When you asked me that question, Magda, oof, I mean, that's one of my favorite topics. Who are you? And what that actually means. So things like core value, um, authenticity, belonging, identity, um, your passions, your purpose, um, meaning and life. I mean, it can go on and on and on and on and on. And that's what I want to help young people see is actually it's not about all the social norms that are put upon you, people's perceptions of what you should do, who you should be. You can be exactly what you want to be. And that's what this course is to make you more confident to explore the inner you and be able to apply that on the outside. So we're looking at things like positive leadership and um, skills, compassionate leadership, um, finding your passion and purpose, identity, and all those things I mentioned before. And yeah, it's gonna reach the world. That's, that's our nice small aim, isn't it? The world. <laughs> the world. I think because whenever I've been in communities in Africa and elsewhere, something that astounds me is nearly everyone has access to the internet now nearly everyone and if they haven't got it in their community they can go out and get you know the internet and i think in the next few years internet will be you know across the world a lot more more accessible so what better opportunity than to try and get these life and leadership and coaching skills to young people who can access it anywhere in the world for free i mean what a change what the impact is amazing really, if you think about it. Yeah. But so yes, yeah. I think it's gonna be amazing. And I will be asking lots of people for support once we launch it so that we yeah. can get, um, oh, hello, creature. Oh, <laughs> creatures, that's my other passion, animals. <laughs> Hi, creature. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh my gosh, oh, hey. that's Sorsha. Um, it's, we're going to get lots of people involved in this and promoting this because talk about potentially life-changing impact right yeah. when you describe it i know you use words like leadership and coaching skills and those things mean something to us as adults they might not mean something to children but we are or teenagers i shouldn't call them children um but you're going to be framing it in a way that is meaningful to them and when i think about challenges that i faced as a teen um as a college kid and early in my career especially all the different things you'll be addressing I wish someone had given me 10% of that. I would have been a better student, more confident person. I think I would have saved myself a lot of tears. Um, yeah. And yeah, just been more well adjusted. So I'm really, really excited for this. So everyone who is watching this live or later, please know that you will be getting many emails from me and from <laughs> Leah around supporting our youth initiatives in the very near future. And we thank and you for your support. Yep, thank you. <laughs> Not us. <awesome. laughs> Do you know, Magda, that's that's the reason why I have a passion for this, because I didn't get anything mm. when I was a young person. And actually, it was a rocky road. And I'm not going to talk about that, but it wasn't nice. And some not very nice things happened. And I had some really bad experiences because I didn't know. I didn't have the information. I didn't know what choices I had for myself. I didn't know what was good or bad because when I've worked in child protection and safeguarding, there are some things, it's like we're anxious or worried or, or nervous, I don't know, about talking about what could happen. You know, those bad scenarios or how to be more confident and how to communicate better and who to talk to. All these things, you know, I didn't have at school at all. I'll never forget my sexual health class. I mean, it was my biology teacher. He was near retirement, much more nervous than we were. It was hilarious. Poor guy. <laughs> Poor guy, honestly. And I didn't even have a clue. I mean, it was so biology kind of described to us. And what do young people do? Oh, don't worry, pets. Pets. No, good. my cat just fell. Oh, no. Poor cat. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, That's Sorry, soldier. It's okay. Sorry. That's good. It needs comedy. <laughs> yes. Poor Sasha. Oh, is she okay? She's fine. She's a cat. 
Okay, my so okay. papers, however, not so fine. So I have now a pile of things that should not have been mixed, which just reminds me to put them away in their folders. I don't know, two weeks ago. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It probably got me off the subject of sex education, so it's probably not bad. <laughs> Let's talk about sex out of it more. Should I bring some bananas? <laughs> but that's what it was, honestly. Yeah. I mean, and teenagers, I know from from experience working with young people, curiosity is something that sadly can cause a few issues as well. So let's get the facts out there. Let's talk openly. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of facts, yes. you're talking openly. Okay. Uh, now we know what you do. And by the way, thank you, thank you for the reactions we're getting so far on LinkedIn. I am trying to take a look at chat. It's very hard. I My brain does not function on multiple screens. But Stefano and Eugene, thank you. Good to see you. I used to work with Eugene. Hi. So nice to see his face. Um, so you're passionate about making life better for young people. Yeah. Partly driven by your experiences. And I can totally relate to that. I also want the world to be better than what I've experienced. And that's the beauty of, I think, uh, internet technology, et cetera. We can actually make it happen. But mm -hmm. um, that's what you want to do for others. I want to shift gears and talk about you a little bit. Because good luck. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Look, this is why we have wine with these conversations. It helps. I should have had more. I only had one sip right there. I'll have some more to fill. Come on, have some more sips. Okay. It's an end wine in this title, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, you're fine. Um, so you know, all the different issues, or not all of them, uh, but lots of the issues you talked about, we still face as adults. Um, yeah. you mentioned confidence. Uh, authenticity, we use that word, and we actually had a webinar this morning on authentic, on authentic leadership. And man, I have a lot of thoughts. Um, authenticity is something that I think about a lot because I don't actually, I should have asked this before, but a lot of people when they've um, met me and the ones who like me, the ones who don't like me, don't talk to me again. But the ones who like me, a lot of times the word that's used is authenticity. And that makes me really, really proud because I, I'm i very passionate and it's really important to me to be myself. Um, yeah. Every time that I haven't been myself, bad things happened either to me, well, usually to me, <laughs> but just good things did not happen. So I, I did learn the hard way when I tried, when I gave into societal pressures very yeah. temporarily, but you know what? I'm done with that. Like, this is what you get. And if you don't like it, I do not give a shit. So good. see you later. I like that. Um, so, I'm cool with that, but I still get nervous. You know, this particular session, not so much because I like you. I think you're cool. I talking to you is easy. Thank I've you. got a glass of wine. I've got Sorsha destroying my office. Happy days. But a lot of times, especially when I'm in a position where I'm seen as an authority. So for example, I'm doing a webinar this Friday about starting an online business, which actually I've done this webinar before once um, with my partner in crime, Binakshi. But just mm -hmm. thinking about it, like my hands get clammy. I, um, I don't know, I get like a knot in my chest. I don't like it. I feel all of a sudden like my confidence goes down. And um, to the point of authenticity, I know I want to be myself, but what's going into my head is, okay, well, I should probably dress differently. I shouldn't, you know, cause I'm wearing a tank top now. Is that gonna be appropriate for a webinar on business? Um, should I, I don't know. Like I have all these questions that start coming up with me inside me questioning my own it's this whole confidence gap thing right like an imposter syndrome yeah. creeping in but it, to me it has to be authenticity as well because i logically know that this is something that i really care about and i want to stick to it yet i'm already doubting myself and i still have two days to go that's bullshit and it sucks and we're dealing with it so you know you teach others how to do this you teach young people what are yeah. your experience with this well, the first response is, we all worry too much about what others think about us. I mean, we really do. And and I think pretty much anyone, I'll be shocked if there's anyone out there that says, oh, I never think what, about what people think of me. Okay, you need to teach me. <laughs> you know, I need to know how to deal with that because I don't. And um, maybe it is just me, I don't know. Because actually, we don't have these sorts of conversations so often as adults 
And it's like people talk about all the, th the good things mostly, really mm. bad things if it's a close friend. But actually, do we have conversations about authenticity? I haven't. I think you're the first person that's had a conversation about authenticity <laughs> with me. <laughs> so for me, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I am me. I don't talk about my past experiences. That doesn't mean I'm not being authentic. That means that I have literally moved on. My past is my past and I'm very much, I'm living in the now and the future i'm not all about that. thank you cheers, cheers. and <laughs> genuinely oh i should drink shouldn't i it's good luck apparently to after you've said cheers to drink so i better i better not lose any good luck um <laughs> authenticity i'm drinking wine on linkedin it's the first time there you go authentic me oh, wow. i've broken you you have i'm on my rioja although my husband did tell me don't get it wrong it's not a rioja it's a ribera del duero so it's a ribera del duero Anyway, your husband um, is a wine old guy. He does translation, and one of his translations is about wine. What an amazing job! He knows this stuff. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on, authenticity. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> talk about I'm everyone else apart from ourselves. This is great. Okay. <laughs> so, authenticity. What you see is what you get with me now, and it's it's really interesting because when I moved to Spain, I everyone came up to me and went, Leah. You're the smiley girl in the village. Everyone calls you the smiley girl. And that really kind of resonated with me because I am. I smile pretty much all of the time. And, and it's not fake and it's not put on. This is me. I literally, I love smiling. I find smiling one of the most amazing things because it has a ripple effect. It helps others smile. And it's actually got me through some really not so good times. So I am smiling. I do have a passion for working with young people. I live my purpose. I, I, well, my purpose now, and you'll find if you do the course that purpose changes, but anyway. Um, I also know that I'm very values driven, very, and I have to live by that, which is why I quit the PhD, because it wasn't me. You know, I was, what I, what I learned when I was doing that PhD is how important authenticity actually is and how authenticity is also about what you're good at and what you're passionate about, what you believe in. And, you know, I, I oh, how, where do I start? I'm very good at research. I was very good at the PhD, but it wasn't a passion. And that was the first time in my life, genuinely, I've been through so much. And that was the first time in my life I actually got really low, like for the first time. And I was like, why am I so low? And it's because I wasn't being authentic to actually who I am and what I believe in, and what my values are, and and what my passion is. So, yeah, I would say, yeah, what you see is what you get. And if I'm not authentic, how am I going to help other people? Authenticity yeah. is like the key to to so much. It's unconditional positive regard. It's it's empathy. It's you can't fake like caring for somebody. You know, when I'm in a coaching session. I'm not just acting, I'm not coaching as a coach, I'm coaching as me, you know, from my soul because I have compassion and because I have love for humanity in general and for things to, to be good. I can see, you know, through my experience where things are going wrong sometimes with our attitudes and our disbelief as humanity against things like climate change and, and other areas, you know, so for me, that compassion has to come through. You have to be yourself, otherwise you can't help people. You can't fake it in life. If you fake it, as you said at the beginning, when things go bad, it's usually because you're faking it. You have to be you. And I think society and pressures in society and cultural, social norms can sometimes stop people being themselves and being who they want to be and doing what they love. I am doing what I love. Literally, I am at the moment, I am in my full passion and purpose. I wouldn't change a thing. I am super, super content, fulfilled, nearly uh, kind of around that, but I'm happy, you know, <laughs> because I've stuck to what I believe in and what I love and what I dreamt of. So, yeah, authenticity is the key. It's one of the, I think for me personally, I don't know if it's everybody. But for me, acceptance and authenticity are two really important things for feeling fulfilled. And that's why when I say to you, I don't look back, I 
it's not because I'm embarrassed or I regret anything. I don't. I'm really actually, I'm kind of glad that everything happened because it gave me the strength to be who I am. It also helps me understand young people that I work with. Some of them, not all. I need to understand everyone from their own perspective and from themselves, their authenticity. Um, but it does help me to understand more. It also gave me a passion to help others. And I'm really proud of my past. I'm proud of my upbringing, even all the bad bits, because it made me who I am. And without it, you know, who would I be? I'm me because of that and now and because of the future and what I do. So, yeah. You are what you eat. Every and experience contributes to who you are. Yeah, it's acceptance. <laughs> yeah. And that's the acceptance. I accept it. It's okay. If I don't accept it and I linger on what has happened, uh, what's that? that's not going to help me. It's not going to help anyone. Right. I need to accept what happened, what may be, all the changes, and that helps you to be happy. So, yeah, that does me anyway. So, <laughs> so do you... Like, I have a couple, so many questions. So, you know, you said that obviously authenticity is important. It's something that um, you strive for. I find that a lot of people, how to explain this? It's like almost they have this preconceived notion of what being authentic means. And they try to act what they think is authentic and then they aren't. And I'm just thinking about you know, a lot of, not just recent, recently, because right now the world is weird and everyone's kind of disheveled, but prior mm -hmm. to the COVID craziness, um, I've been working from home for quite a few years. And there's so many times, especially when I'm interacting with people who I only will maybe get to do like a Zoom call or something once or only a couple of times, like limited interactions. The number of times that, you know, they think they've already hung up, but there's like that split second between when this they think the screen went off and when the screen went off and you can see their face change and i'm just like i don't know if it's just me that they're like they're like oh it's so good to see you yeah yeah do you know what i'm talking about like and i just yeah. i wonder well first of all i wonder why like am i just so untolerable <laughs> that they have absolutely to no face? way <laughs> um, no. But why do people do it, do you think? Like, what, what, how does that serve them to, and, and why? Okay, wow, no one's ever asked me this, so I need to think deep. And why do they do it? I mean, Magda, it could literally be what we've been talking about, which is we don't learn communication skills, as in about communication skills and how we, we also might react like that because that's how we react. And we don't think how the other person might perceive how we're reacting. That might just be who they are. And I think we do sometimes look into reactions very deeply. And I think that's what we were talking about the other day about like focusing on the negatives, mm. reading into stuff as well. And maybe that's just what they do. You never know. Mm. And I think so if I so I'm judging people basically you're saying great no no not at all <laughs> no I'm thinking I guess when we talk about anything like this in a way we are judging a situation more than a person you know we have to work out we're only humans we're social creatures and we have to kind of work out facial expressions and and others reactions but maybe it's because they're sad as well you know they're sad in themselves and they're putting on a smile for the rest of humanity to see. Yeah. And actually it's it's nothing personal, but maybe they've they're experiencing things in their own life and they're putting on a front yeah. to show that they're happy, which a lot of people do out there. They put on a front, I'm always happy, I'm this. And then when it's finished, kind of reverting back to that sadness, maybe. It, there's so many different reasons why. Yeah. So many. it makes me feel really lucky as you're saying that because if that is that's that's a possibility, right? But mm -hmm. the fact that I don't have to do that, it makes me feel very lucky that yeah. um I'm able to express what I want to express and frankly that I don't need to put on that face. So um thanks, universe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I I'm trying to remember back, like if I do think of back then, 
I probably would have put on a face and that's mm. why everyone would have thought I was okay actually yeah. and that's why a lot of people don't reach out to help because they don't understand the non-verbal cues yeah. so in coaching we know all about you know non-verbal cues and and you know the behavior that we have within our body and and those that we actually learn that but do others do others understand nonverbal communication fully and that haven't learned those skills? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Mm. And that's why I'm really passionate about teaching all these different things and how people might react to different situations. And yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this then. You teach this. <laughs> I, I know that your background is not corporate. Uh, we talked about it a couple uh, yesterday, actually, that you know your background's more in nonprofit, et cetera. Yeah, um, not corporate at all. Yeah, at all. Sorry, my background no. isn't even that corporate either. Like it's more you know startups, small companies. But I'm just wondering, you know, there's especially in leadership positions, I have found quite a few examples. I've had quite a few experiences where the the leader was trying to be authentic and people kind of roll their eyes. Uh, and I think, you know, there's there's this balance between being myself and being what I perceive as appropriate for the situation, et cetera. So it's, you know, it happens, I think, especially I think in startup world, at least back when I was involved in that, because it's been three years now since I've even, you know, interacted with other company <laughs> in this way. But there seems to be a bit of an air of, Let's try to be a bit more cool. I don't know. Maybe I'm not explaining myself very clearly, but it happens like, you know, in, in school too. If I think about um, even in high school, like I tried to be myself and a lot of times I would get punished for it. I got punished for it in work situations. Um, and it's a conflict for me because on one hand, I don't want to annoy people. I don't want to get fired. I don't want to be inappropriate. I don't think I'm hurting anybody. So that's not a question I'm considering. But at the same time, I can, you know, I can read people's body language <laughs> and the nonverbal cues. So I know that I don't always rub people the wrong way. But yeah, so like, should I continue being myself? Or is it appropriate sometimes to not be yourself? Because, yeah, am I asking a question? I don't know. Leah, <laughs> you get me enough. You know what I'm saying. I think, yeah, I think I get it. So, <laughs> so. Basically, I actually had a conversation um, recently with a younger person who, who, where this topic came up and, you know, they asked about being themselves in a job interview. And I can't obviously say all the details, but just to be themselves within that interview. And actually, the conversation moved forward to, well, make sure that you know what the, the company's values are what their vision is for the next five years and how you might fit into that vision. And so we do have to adapt sometimes to a situation. You know, we can't be, we, we need to be ourselves, but sometimes we need to meet kind of the vision of that business um, or um, the rules. You know, if we're in a school or in university or in the workplace, there are rules, there are boundaries, there are norms, which I'm not too keen on the word, but anyway, um, within those places that you have to stick to. And sometimes it might feel that you're not being authentic. And I think that's where, for me, I'm very passionate about following what I both love and what I'm good at, because that way you're not conflicting with who you are. So if we look at it that way instead, if you do a job that you really love and you're really good at it and you share the values of the company, then you're being who you are. You'll be able to be completely authentic. Sometimes people don't allow us to be authentic or allow us to be who we are. It's kind of the world over. So I don't think it's the case of people choose not to be authentic. I think sometimes in businesses or organizations, schools, universities, whatever, they make an imprint on us to be like them or to, to do the job. And actually think of that. Think of that when you're looking towards your future, what kind of job, what course, what things can I do that I can be me in, I can be authentic in? Mm. I hope that kind of answers the question. 
It does. And what comes up for me is, you know, you mentioned that you are very values based. I think I am too. And I think that has helped me avoid having to make these sort of choices um, a lot. Not totally because I've had my fair share of <clears throat> mistakes, let's call them. But I think starting with your values and kind of I always like thinking of the best case scenario and the worst case scenario. Like I, it's such a simple thing, but it helps me so much. Um, and in terms of values as well, like are these stretchable or the, they shouldn't be flexible because they're your values, but you know, you come up with a value and what does that mean to me? What does it not mean to me? Mm -hmm. And um, if a particular part of this isn't a hundred percent met, well, what am I, t what am I going to, willing to tolerate? What am I not going to tolerate? Yeah. And as long as you uh, have that honesty with yourself, that authenticity with yourself, and you've identified a few kind of guiding principles that are important to you, and you identified how important they are to you, I think it's much easier to make decisions. Um, just, yeah, jobs with most things, frankly. Yeah, completely agree. You're not going to be able to all the time, every second of every day, be 100% in alignment with your values because that's why people get upset as well sometimes because they're not you know in alignment with their values in fact not many people even know what their values are what are your <laughs> what, values what are core values my number one value is freedom and that word can be interpreted in so many ways and that's another thing is everybody has their own interpretation of their values so i could say for example, one of my top core values is risk taking. Well, everyone will interpret that how the heck they want. For me, risk taking is how on earth am I ever going to move forward if I don't make mistakes, if I don't do things like this? This is scary. It's really, honestly, I was so nervous before coming on, still am. In fact, I should have drunk more wine. But anyway, I'm not saying wine's good for being anxious, by the way. Any young people out there watching? <laughs> um, not at all. Shake your head. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> But risk taking for me is traveling alone, is going to camp on an island in Africa, completely alone, surrounded by animals, watching the stars where anything could go wrong, but you kind of trust that it won't because it's going to make me a person that's deeper within myself. I'm going to see things and feel things that I could only have dreamt of before. And if I didn't take that risk, I wouldn't have experienced that. And actually that example is one of the better examples you know it was the most beautiful moment of my life one of if I don't go and walk you know in the mountains and in the forest and uh, there's bears and wolves in the village so sometimes I go into the forest and look for bears and wolves because I used to be a wildlife conservation biologist just in case you think why so <laughs> I love animals I love wildlife and we don't need to be a conservation biologist to love animals and wildlife. Thank you very no, much. Leah. No, no, true, completely. <laughs> but I'm a little bit more investigative. So okay, it's like a little hobby. Cool. I do take on the science side. Anyway, um, but those risks just make you feel, for me, human. So that's the risk taking. It's not other risk taking that maybe mm. other people would interpret it as. You know, it's risks that will help me develop. Um, other core values compassion, personal growth, privacy. And this is hard. I talked about this the other day. Mm. You know, this is the first time in my life I'm kind of going against that. But maybe our core values can change through time. I, I don't know the answer. They can. They can. And I'm glad that I'm going against that green because by going against that green and doing things like this, which I would never have done a year ago, seriously, I would never, ever, ever have done all this a year ago. That's that's probably the risk taken that had gone too far, but it didn't. I did it. And I went there and I got here because young people are online. Everyone's online. So if you're going to help people, it's a really good way to reach out. Yeah. I like that. And there's loads more values, but I won't bore you with them all. <laughs> no, no, they're not, they're not boring. No, they, they, they are great. It's making me think. Um, and it's just so funny because... Uh, you know, I want to talk about authenticity today for a different reason, but as I'm listening to you, I'm just thinking that for me, authenticity is the number one most important thing. Nothing okay. else matters to me if I can't be myself. Um, mainly because I think I've had a lot of people tell me in different ways that myself is not what they think is a great thing to be. And, um, 
Yeah. It just it makes me a little bit angry and a little bit more determined to be myself. Um, but I mean, it does go along with also things you said too, you know, for freedom and being, for me, being kind, I think is also really, really important. And, but it relates to me to authenticity. It's like, yeah. I am not an asshole. I can be. And you know what? If you mess with me or mine, you are, you have no idea how much that's going to hurt you because I will not hold back. Um, <laughs> no one messed with Hannah ever. <laughs> Hannah is good. Hannah's the best. Um, Can't wait to meet Hannah one day. She sounds Hannah's epic. Pretty amazing. Yeah, she's pretty amazing. Um, Hannah is Hannah. my child, but I have told her parents that I will kidnap her multiple times. <laughs> but she's lovely. Um, yeah. Anyway, I lost my train of thought. Do you know what, though, Magda? Yes. You said something that made me think about opinions okay and about authenticity and stuff like that the stuff that's we own we're passionate about we are who we are and if anyone goes against that you know we get very upset anyone does depending on what their values are but it doesn't help because people make judgments they have opinions they put across points of view and you know those things are all okay as long as you try to understand the other person first. And that is key for me as an individual, it's, it's try and find out and understand the situation, the topic, the issue, the problem, the dreams, why someone might be angry. You know, I work a lot with young people with behavioral difficulties. And my first question is to others, you know, tell me about why this, oh, I don't know, he's just really naughty or she's really, I'll go and speak with the young person and sit with them and go, right, tell me about this. Tell me what's going on for you. And that behavior, and everyone's like, oh, Leah, you have a magic trick. No, I don't. I don't have a magic trick at all. I just ask open questions and try and find out about the person. And everyone else has put so much judgment on that person and so many points of view and so many opinions. And now I'm used to people going, oh, Leah, you did this, you there, saw this. It's like, Ask me a few more questions and I'll answer. <laughs> Try yeah. and understand the why or the what or the who or any of those things. Does that apply to everybody? Because I am just thinking of, and I am not sorry if this offends anybody, American president, who I can't <laughs> believe that he even can, I hate him so much. I, I never hated a person before, I think. Um, I disliked a few, but I never hated with every fiber of my being. I hate him. I think he's an idiot. Um, he's more than an idiot. He's, oh my gosh, I'm going to stop myself before I say something that I'm not going to regret, but it's going to take forever. Anyway, with someone like that, with the kinds of behaviors that he exhibits on a regular basis and the kinds of behaviors he incites in others, I, I'm sorry, there is nothing, nothing I could learn about him, his background, his thinking, nothing that would justify in my head the sorts of sexist, racist, cruel things he said and done. Nothing. Unconditional positive regard no longer for me applies to him. And I know this is the most obvious example I could have possibly thought of, but in my life, I've had a few people who, again, not that bad, but, you know, I, I just, I, I, I can't make an excuse for them anymore. At what point is it, you know, does trying to understand somebody turn into making excuses for them and tolerating behavior that really shouldn't be tolerated? The beauty about being human is we have a choice. We have a choice as to whether or not we want to do that. If it's going so against our values and so against our beliefs and, you know, I'm so anti-oppression that I wouldn't want to speak to somebody like that. I wouldn't want to give them a moment of my time because the most important thing to me is my time. So anyone who is oppressive, I don't want to fully understand that. However, if I'm working with a young person, which is why, why I work with young people as well, because they are the future. And that is a chance for us then to help young people understand and to be amazing people the good examples of positive leaders and that's why i struggle when with working with adults sometimes 
because I'm sitting there and I'm going, I can't do what I usually do with young people. I can't, you know, help you to look inside yourself because you've developed so many opinions and beliefs. It takes a lifetime of unlearning. And with a young person, that's different. You can help them to think about their beliefs and what consequences there might be and, and you know, the positive intentions, the negative intent, well, all those things. So for me, I would just walk away. And I would make the choice not to understand that person because I've got better things to do. Mm. But for a young person, no. I think for a young person, for me, it's very different. Very, And that's why working with young people, when people ask me, well, you can coach anyone. I could coach anyone. Absolutely. And I do. I coach adults. I, I coach um, leaders of NGOs. I, I, I coach loads of adults. But actually, there's something really precious about working with young people because at that point, all those years of oppression, negative views, horrible stuff, etc., hasn't happened. And at that point, they're at an age where they can make the decisions to move forward to do good for themselves and for others and make an impact. And unfortunately, I bet people like who you're talking about didn't have coaching skills in school, positive leadership skills in school. We had no skills. skills whatsoever oh my god <laughs> which, I hate which is so why much. i do what i do yeah okay yeah, yeah. okay so thanks to you ever. we will not have any people like trump ever again yay <laughs> i'm putting you on a shot <laughs> people join in this movement help yes. <laughs> seriously I let's can't help bring us build a strong generation of good leaders, of leaders of moral leaders um, and on that note, I think we're going to wrap things up because I think I'm going to go on tangents if we don't. <laughs> I love it. And I, love I know it. myself enough to know when to quit. But thank you so much, Leah. This has been awesome to reflect on authenticity and molding of young minds. And to anyone who's watching, if you if you know when you want to be involved with the work that Leah is doing <laughs> around coaching and mentoring, of people, of people, young people around the world. And the project that she's doing with Kocharia, where she is building a amazing set of courses to help young people deal with life transitions and help them skill up and have some advantages that we perhaps didn't have as kids. Um, please, please, please go to kocharia.com forward slash youth. I did put that in the comments on LinkedIn. I will add that to the description uh, when I post the video, but um, we will definitely need your help in spreading the word about this good work. It's a free program that we're doing for any young person that has access to the internet. This will be free and there's no sales pitch. <laughs> it's really to help the world. And um, Leah is at the helm of that. And yeah, I thank need, you so much. So seriously, Again? youth coaches, mentors, etc. You know, get in touch. This, this yeah, is get in touch. Mm -hmm. I will link to your LinkedIn profile wherever this video is seen. Mm -hmm. So please, people, link with Leah and reach out and support, support, support her and support the young people in your life. I think that's so super, super important because you know we all have baggage, and like Leah said, we have years of conditioning and habits and learning and a lot of times we put those things onto other people and you know if it's an adult to adult maybe there's pushback the person also has had life experience to people have a conversation uh children teenagers don't have that benefit so they might not so um you know be kind to the kids in your life around your life and set a good example but also listen to them because you might learn something because they don't have the baggage that you have so who knows be a positive role model be yeah. the person you wish you had when you were younger and you know, think deep about that yeah and thank you <laughs> thank you so much leah and cheers my glass of wine is empty is yours nope no i'm not doing very well am i oh well it's okay i'll finish it in a minute <laughs> Too much talking, <laughs> not enough drinking. Well, I'm gonna get the drink because I needed it today. <laughs> All right, thanks very much, Leah. Really Thank good you to see so you. much. Cheers. Bye.